Yes, Danny Pepperseed here in Penthouse Studio, Kingston, Jamaica, together with one of the most legendary reggae producers, Donovan Germain. Donovan, welcome. Um, World of Reggae website. Respect Danny Pepperseed, Bridges for 20 years. Good to see you here in Jamaica. Yes, it's, it's, it's a joy to be here. Um, well, we are here now because Penthouse and the label and the studio um, it's having its 25th anniversary this year. Um, there's a very nice project that you did with, uh, with VP Records. So I'm here to talk about your history and the whole thing about Penthouse Records and also the labels you had before. So for the people who don't know Donovan Germain, can you give us a brief introduction of your career and what you've done so far? Well, it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> I started in music business in 1971. In a record store in on St. John's Place in Brooklyn, New York, I worked there as a clerk, and ultimately ended up owning the store. I got into record distribution via Gussie Clark, Lloyd Campbell, and Sooner Pottinger, where I learned about selling records on a wholesale basis, and then I got into the production, 1978. As German music, revolutionary sounds, reggae, rubber dub. And 1988, I opened the Penthouse Records here in Kingston, Jamaica. Hence the 25th anniversary of Penthouse, not necessarily the 25th anniversary of Donovan German as a producer, but Penthouse, the 25th anniversary of Penthouse. Yeah, well, you mentioned already, like, you, you own the records, uh, record store, you did record distribution. Um, well, there, there's plenty of, of 12 inches pressed on, on, on your label that, that you did distribute them time from, from in the 70s. Now, one of the first projects you did um, was, like, an album with Cultural Roots, which happened to be re-released, like, like not too long ago by, by a German label. Um, tell us a bit, like, like what your first experience is like as a producer, like, within the studio, because you work with, with, with great artists and, and, and great musicians like Sly and Robbie and the Revolutionaries. Well, I must give credit to my mentors as a producer, to Gussie Clark and Lloyd Campbell. I was an apprentice to them, that's where I learned to the art of being a producer. My idols in the business is Clement Dodd and Drew Creed, because the foundation that they laid for our music is immeasurable. So from that standpoint, I moved from Lloyd Campbell, Cosy Clark, to Donovan Jeremy. Uh, in, in, it was a bit intimidating at first when I started, because you know, there's something new to you, you don't, you, you don't want to fail. But ultimately, I, I realized that you just have to go and do your best, and whatever it, the outcome, outcome, outcome of it, if it doesn't happen, you go to the next song. So that's how I really looked at it. Yes, yeah, so now your first steps as a producer, it was a little different because you never had your own studio. So that you know means you had to rent a studio. Um, which studio did you use at that time? Well, I started off at Channel One and Treasure Isle, which was owned by Mrs. Pottinger. And we did some work at Joe Gibbs, Dynamic Sounds, Tough Gun. But this, the, the, the story that oh, I ended up with in my own studio, I used to, when I lived in the States, rent a studio in Jamaica for a month at a time. And I remember I rented the studio, for, came to Jamaica one February, and all the necessary infrastructure, artists and everything in place to do my work. When I went to the studio to be told that I didn't have the time because Byron Lee was using the time to do this carnival stuff. Nobody informed me. And I, that's when I vowed to have my own studio because I said that was, to me was the ultimate in disrespect. Mm -hmm. That was someone that had been supporting you, studio. Nobody bothered to call me to tell me that the time wasn't available. I paid for the time and came and took the time was not there because the boss wanted the time. <laughs> so I just said, okay, that's what it is. I'm going to get my own studio. Yeah, that kind of forced you into thing. Well, in the meantime, you, of course, produced this big hit with Freddie McGregor, Just Don't Want to Be Lonely. Yes. 
How come that about? You know, I, I was in my house in Florida, in Florida and I was I'm an old school freak. And I listened to this song and I said, wow, this song sounds like a nice song to do in reggae. I, keep it, I didn't know Freddie McGregor, but I just figured that he, his voice was the voice for that song. So I keep it Jamaica and I think it was Sly Dunbar who hooked me up with, with Freddie, called him. He came and did the song. When he did the song, I don't think he, was, he, he even thought there was anything special about the song. He just came and did the song because maybe because Sly said and Jeremy and, came, and he did. So when the song became a hit now, he realized, wow. It was really, was worth his while. <laughs> it was worth his while. Yeah, so then, well, you opened Penthouse Studio in 1988. Um, that was like a, a new time because at that time now just the whole digital thing came in. Um, you had Jammies, of course, running the place. Um, Gussie Clark opened his, his studio at about the same time, uh, the same time as you did. He changed the sound before. a little. Gussie yeah. was actually a little before, a little before eh? I opened my studio. But like the thing that you shared was that you had the same compound because mm -hmm. both studios were the legendary place. Like everybody into Jamaican music should know this address. It's a legendary address, 56 Slipe Road, mm -hmm. um, near Crossroads. And well, there were two great studios, Gussie Clark Music Works Studio and Penthouse Studio. So tell us a bit like how the studio they came about, how you build it and, and, and what ideas you had for the studio. You know, I don't even know if, 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 what ideas I had. I just knew I wanted to have my own. Because my passion for production, I didn't think I should be subjecting myself to, to, be, to, be, to be waiting to get some time to do something. Because I'm a very creative person. And when, when, when an idea comes to me, I just want to get in the studio and do it. Because sometimes if I have to wait two weeks, then the passion is gone. So I realized for me to be successful, I had to have my own studio that I have access to 24-7. That's, that's all I cared about. I didn't know anything about building a studio. I just I got my, my in-law, Hodenis, had the, the built, built the place for me. And I remember Chow, who used to work at, who was resident technical engineer at Tough Gong. I just went and asked him to give me some ideas and he came up there and gave us some ideas, gave the workman ideas what to do. And, and uh, Penthouse wasn't a perfect studio because I didn't have any the technical expertise as I have had it done in this particular studio. So I have to credit the creativity for what transpired at 56 Life Road. Mm -hmm. And it is the, country, the, the, the creativity of... Tony Kelly, Dave Kelly, Stephen Stanley, myself, the musicians and the artists, really, it's a very creative and experimental time also. Mm -hmm. So to, 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 to accomplish what we accomplished at, in, a, in, in a far from perfect environment, you know, so I have to give credit to all those people. So I didn't have any, like I said, I didn't have any ideas. I just, I just knew I wanted to have my own studio. Mm -hmm. So I just went out and got it done. But then your big break came like in the early 90s, you know, like when you had this tune called Tempted to Touch by Beres. Um, and of course, the remix, Love May I Forget, with, with Cotty Ranks. Um, actually, that was the time that I came into dancehall music as well, that I, that I started to listen to dancehall music. So from there on, you know, like my life and the, 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 the history of Penthouse started to sync up. And, you know, I've, I've, I've seen all those great hit scenes. And it was that time that Penthouse completely took over the business. Um, you know, like with all those hits, you know, Marsha Griffith, Sanchez, Wayne Wonder, and then, of course, like Buju Banton. Um, Cotty Ranks, Ranks Terry, Terry Ganzi. Tell us a bit about that that early '90s era. You know, like the vibes in the studio and 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 and, and all the stuff that was going on there. Well, all right, all the names you called were young people with a, with a passion and were hung, hungry for success. So we used to be this studio 16, 20 hours every day, and it just felt like an hour. But see what really happened. We just kept recording, recording, recording. Every day we recorded songs, like, I, like I'm still doing now. Mm -hmm. Because we, gave, we always gave ourselves an option to pick a song from a set of songs. 
Yeah. This, you, you just didn't, every song we recorded, we just didn't put it out. We, mm -hmm. we made 10 songs and we put out, look for the best song and put it out. Because right, even now I'm going through my catalog to put it, digitize the catalog, and there's so many songs that we recorded that wasn't even released. That even, mm -hmm. even from a standpoint, you, you saw, you, you, you uh, Granny Six song on, on the 20th, 25th anniversary album, it was never released. I just happened on it while I was transferring some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I did rem remember that I even had that song. I found another song also with Garnet. So if it, it, it just sp speak to what I'm saying, that we just used to just record song. Every day we just kept recording, recording, record. Everybody was hungry and everybody was helping each other. It was not a situation where people, it was, a, it was not a competitive atmosphere. It was a family atmosphere where nobody was watching the success of the next person. Because ultimately, one person's success begets the next person's success. That's how we looked at it. Mm -hmm. So we basically just doing, being there, hands on, everybody there every day. Until it, you know, it, it showed in the work that we put in. You know, the, 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 we were rewarded for the work we put in. Yeah, and you know that paid off because to many people up to the up to 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 this day, you know, the penthouse catalog and especially like the early '90s stuff that that is the definition of, you know, that era, you know, because those songs and those rhythms they they really stand out, you know, especially like when you play them in the dance, you know, like the the way how they were mixed and the whole sound of it, you know, they 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 they, they really stand out, you know. So it's it's quality music. It's the quality have no fear of time. <laughs> But you see, again, it, it's the work of, I, 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 my, my belief, if I'm doing something, I want the best people to do it. Because if, you, if you're sick now, you want to try and find the best doctor to go to. It's the same if you're making a song. You want to find the best musician, the best engineer. Stephen Stanley is the best mixing engineer. So even if you can, you can record a song and, and then the, the engineer will mix it properly, all that work is gone for naught. But Stephen Stanley, always mixing all my songs because I knew at the end of the day it would have been the best possible sound we're going to be getting at the time. So that's why it's even to this day you play it. It is still quality coming through your speakers. Mm -hmm. But we that was that deliberate situation that I wanted Stephen Stanley to mix my songs. So to this day, it's still mixing for us along with Shane Brown. Mm -hmm. I believe in getting the best people. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a very good thought behind the whole thing you know and and really that that got you the respect as a, as a producer you know um well you know like we, we we're moving a bit up like moving to the to the mid 90s um well in the meantime you started to manage Bujo Banton go on the road with Bujo a lot as well um well Dave Kelly branch off on his own set up Maddow so um kids oh, grow oh. <laughs> up and move on yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's all thing, all if I think it happened. But still Penthouse, even though Dave Kelly wasn't there again, like like you still maintain that quality music because even in, 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 in the second half of the nineties, Penthouse still um used to be like a force to, to be reckoned with, you know? Well, I'm the producer. Not, the engineer might have gone, but I'm still a producer. And I I wasn't I was a hands on producer. I was, I was a situation that I some like some producers know who have engineers produce for them. No, I, I sat there in this chair, told the musician what I want, and I left the mixing up to Steven Sand because I trusted him. Mm -hmm. So nothing really changed. Personal will always change but just like in the, in the company, personal will change but the brand will always be the same. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how I, I and I'm hands on to this day. I'm still hands on. Even new artists that I have now, I still in the studio with them. Yeah, because taking a, a step a bit further, you know, like in the in for for the past five years, Penthouse has really been there where it used to be, you know, like in the top spot of of, of the reggae and dancehall industry. Um, tell us a bit about the new crew and a new set of artists um, you are working with at the moment. Well, okay, for for a couple of years we've been struggling in, in terms of the quality of the music, not Penthouse, but the industry in a whole. Mm -hmm. With the advent of the technology, everyone being able to go in their, in their house and make a song. So a lot of people said, became, said they are producers without any training. Like I can say, I, I, I was an apprentice to, 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 to reputable producers. I could learn the art of being a producer. A lot of people making songs, you know, they, they don't know the art of, of producing music. So hence they had this inferior quality music, making the rounds and being played in the radio station because they're friends in the radio station and stuff like that. But now... We find a new set of artists, young artists who 
are dedicated to quality and they are prepared to make the sacrifice to think about the music in dust, you know, just about themselves. So they, 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 we're going back to the foundation. Like I just told someone today, the, the music was purging itself. Because ultimately, if it, go, it goes to rock bottom, it, only way it can go now is up. Mm-hmm. So we, we're on the ascendancy right now, which I hope we, we can we'll continue on with, the, with the, 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 the commitment and support of the district is we should be like, in good stead in the next year or two again. Well, um, yesterday I was here in the studio. You played me some some new stuff um, by by Sugar, by D Major. Um, well, other artists are uh, which are around is is Esco Levi, um, also um, R C Dalton Harris, a talented young youth um, who's still who's still in school and and you know managing him singing career. Um, tell us a bit about that new wave of artists and, and, and what you have planned for them. What can we expect like in the near future for Penthouse? Well, if, if, if people know the history of Penthouse, I've always had a crew of artists that we develop. We just don't record an artist. We try and make a complete person who happens to be an artist. So that we are in the process of with these new set of artists. They had the R.C., the Sugar, the Dalton, the Escaliva, the Major, Sherita. We're trying to bring a new look to the industry again. Because one of the problems our industry had over the years is we, a lot of people were educationally challenged. And that, that showed itself in an interview when people couldn't represent themselves. So by extension, they couldn't represent the music industry. Mm-hmm. No, we, and that comes from lack of preparation. No, I am trying to prepare the artist that represents Penthouse because, like I, I tell them, Penthouse is 25 years. They, just, they, just, they, 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 they have to come and maintain a standard that the world is accustomed to from Penthouse. So, hence, we are consistently con- trying to make the, have them understand the, the music industry, what their role in the music industry is, and try to be the best possible artist that they can be. Yeah, well, that's true. Um, now, one other thing I want to ask you. Um, let's let's go a bit into the um, um, the new compilation, the Penthouse 25th anniversary compilation. It's um it's a double CD, and it's also like a DVD with um, footage from 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 Penthouse Studio. What can people expect when they buy that that CD? You can well. One of the most important thing you can expect is that the, the, the DVD with, with a, a very in-depth interview from myself and some of the artists that have been a part of this 25-year journey with Pentos. I, uh, I've tried not to make the album the same as the anthology, the Pentos anthology. So it, there are certain songs that. Uh, you, as someone might be saying, oh, it's not on this, this album, but it was on the anthology, so I didn't want to put the anthology at the 25th anniversary album all over again. Mm-hmm. So this, there were some, some songs that I just had special meaning that was on the anthology that I put on the 25th anniversary. Like the, the first number one song, Shaka Dima's on the move, and there's this, the first song we recorded, the thing there, with, 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 with Michael as his, as his name is now. So, and then we, f- we found that the, the, that Garden Six song that was never released. There is this beautiful song that we know that did for PM Dawn, Die Without You, which I put on this, because it was such a beautiful song that they didn't get the justice that it deserved mm-hmm. in this time. So it was a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an album that I figured it represents the various aspects of, of, of Penthouse, the young artists with the young, the young singers, the older artists, the combinations, the instrumentals, the first, like I said, the first song recorded, the first number one song, stuff like that. So it, had, it had special meaning to me, so, you know, special significance to me, the, the, the project and the songs that we chose on that, on that 25th anniversary. Okay, well, people, check it out. Penthouse 25th anniversary out now on VP Records, double CD. Also, a DVD is there, so that's a, a nice package. Well, we're here at Penthouse Studio still. This is the voicing room. I'm here with Mr. Donovan Germain, legendary record producer. So, Germain, thank you very much for your time, you know? Thank you very much for having me. You're more than welcome, also. <laughs>